Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter and I'm super excited about this series on ProRes RAW that we're doing. So, this is video number one. There will be a total of three, maybe four parts to this series and in this one we're going to primarily focus on what ProRes RAW is and why you should care about it because it is a pretty huge shift in our industry and as time goes on we're just going to see more and more of this i think so this is one kind of an introduction talking about what prores raw is and why it's powerful in part two we're going to talk about actually shooting with prores raw uh, the things you need to make that happen and a couple uh, things to keep in mind there and finally in part three we're going to talk about post-production how to get it set up and then some quirks and some amazing stuff with how to actually grade and use ProRes RAW. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump in. There's a couple things you can do to really help me out. First, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss these future videos. I'm hoping to do more series like this in the future. Uh, the second is if you enjoy this style of guide format multi-video training, uh, check out some of our guides in the description. We have multi-hour guides available for various cameras and other uh, types of training when it comes to filmmaking. So if you want more than short videos here and you really want to dive in and master everything there is to know about video on a particular camera, be sure to check those out. So with all that out of the way, what is ProRes RAW? The explanation is all in the name. ProRes RAW is both ProRes and RAW. So let's start with the ProRes part of ProRes RAW. ProRes RAW is a codec created by Apple. In short, a codec is a method of compressing and decompressing video. Without codecs, the information coming from your camera sensor would be huge. We're talking gigabytes or more per second of data. Codecs allow us to compress that information and save it to our SD cards. Some codecs are better than others, and each codec compresses video in different ways. What makes ProRes special is how flexible it is and the way it compresses video. Most of the small, large sensor cameras that we shoot on today use codecs like XAVC or H.264. These codecs are okay for retaining a decent amount of information and keeping file sizes small. The problem with these codecs is editing them. When you play back or edit these codecs, your computer has to work a lot harder to decompress the video. So in short, codecs like H.264 have high compression, which is good for small cameras and file sizes, but bad for editing and retaining the most information possible. And this is where ProRes steps in. ProRes creates a much larger file than H.264, but it's much easier on your system. This is why many shooters and editors convert or transcode their H.264 files to ProRes before editing. Unfortunately, most cameras can't record video directly to ProRes internally, but this is possible with external recorders such as those found in the Atomos lineup of products. So, the ProRes in ProRes RAW tells us that file sizes will be manageable and playback will be good when we sit down to edit our videos. Now onto the RAW part of ProRes RAW. RAW video works similar to the way RAW photography works. When we shoot RAW photos, we are capturing all or at least a lot of the sensor data from our cameras. Shooting a single RAW photo is sort of like shooting a photo multiple times, but with every ISO setting, every white balance setting, and even more all with one click of the shutter button. The same goes for raw video, except we're doing this at 24 or more times every second, which is pretty mind blowing if you think about it. Traditionally, when we capture video or JPEG photos, the camera is using our settings to bake that look into a file. We can make some tweaks in post-production, but for the most part, what you shot is what you get. RAW lets us change values like exposure, white balance in extreme ways in post-production without losing quality. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm trying to simplify things here and RAW can be a very complex topic, but hopefully this all makes sense so far. Now, the problem with RAW is twofold. First, RAW takes a ton of storage space on whatever capture media you're using as well as wherever you store your projects and files. The second is that RAW often requires a more difficult workflow. Take Cinema DNG, for example. 
This popular flavor of raw video sometimes requires you to import your raw footage, make changes to the raw files, and then transcode for editing. And if you're using something like Final Cut Pro 10, you can't even touch Cinema DNG natively. The workflow is really rough for playback because we're dealing with these massive, massive file sizes. So often we have to create smaller proxies and then we can't make changes to raw. It's just a headache for workflow. ProRes Raw, on the other hand, lets you import and edit right away without any special workflows. You essentially get raw video, but with a standard workflow. No editing round trips, no transcoding, and you just get great, smooth, buttery performance, but it's still raw and we can still make all those changes. So back to our main question, what is ProRes RAW? ProRes RAW is the incredible ProRes codec that most of us know and love for smooth editing playback, and it is RAW video letting us take full advantage of that RAW data captured. So now that we've covered ProRes and RAW separately, let's get into some details about how ProRes RAW behaves. Workflow-wise, ProRes RAW is just like ProRes. You can use a variety of resolutions, frame rates, and even compression rates. For compression, ProRes RAW can be captured in two forms, ProRes RAW and ProRes RAW HQ. I tested both of these options for file size comparisons and found the following. When shooting Cinema 4K DCI at 24 frames per second, a 10 second clip in ProRes RAW HQ created a 1.36 gig file. ProRes RAW, not the HQ variety on the other hand, created a 1.17 gigabyte file. Those might sound like huge files if you're new to RAW, but compared to Cinema DNG, those are actually pretty small. Using the same resolution and frame rate, a 10 second Cinema DNG file is a whopping 3.26 gigs, which scaled over time is a huge amount of data, obviously. The size of your file will depend on what you're filming, believe it or not. If you're shooting a heavily over or underexposed image, ProRes RAW will create a larger file with more flexibility to correct in post and correctly expose shots will result in a smaller file size. You can read and see more of this information in Apple's white paper on ProRes RAW. And to quote that document, ProRes RAW is designed to maintain constant quality and pristine image fidelity for all frames. As a result, images with greater detail or sensor noise are encoded at higher data rates and produce larger file sizes. And to learn more about ProRes RAW compression, you can read Apple's official white paper via the link in the description for more information. But the point here is ProRes is very efficient. If it doesn't need to capture a ton of information, it won't. And you'll see those storage savings when you look at your files. So to recap part one of the series on ProRes RAW, this new format allows us to shoot RAW video without the traditional headaches associated with shooting RAW. With ProRes RAW, we can shoot and edit RAW video on newer and older computers without stuttering or giant file sizes. This is a massive shift in our industry, and I for one am super stoked to start shooting and using ProRes RAW more. So at this point, hopefully now you know what ProRes RAW is, why it's significant. In our next video, we're gonna be talking about how to actually shoot with ProRes RAW. So you might be saying, fine, this sounds great, sign me up. But there's of course, as always with this stuff, there's some things to keep in mind and some limitations as to what cameras and equipment you need to make this work. So in our next video, we're gonna break all that stuff down. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that stuff if you aren't already. And I'm hoping to get all these videos up this week. So in the next couple of days, you should see the entire series up here on YouTube. So with all that out of the way, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.